Hello everybody, welcome to this new uh, training on Citrix ADC, Citrix Netscaler. I know that a lot of you uh, ask me to do this training, so uh, this is the good day. So we'll see a lot of uh, aspects about Citrix Netscaler. Uh, so this is the first uh, lecture and we will see what is Netscaler. So this is the presentation of uh, what is Netscaler for and why do you need it uh, for your company, for your network. So, first of all, Citrix ADC is an application switch. So, it's an intelligent distribution optimized and secure layer 4 through layer 7 network traffic. And the Netscaler is doing the, the, the most uh, functionality, of course, of the Netscaler is three things. The first thing that you have, of course, is uh, acceleration. So, acceleration here, it's you know, you have Netscatter and you have people connecting outside your company, for example, and you want them to be able to access your backend here server. So you need a way to do acceleration. Acceleration is really very important uh, because with that, you will be sure that, you know, your customer will be happy and will have a good, you know, response about your application here. The second thing is availability. Of course, availability is one of the most important thing, of course, and security. So this is the free aspect. We'll see, we'll cover all this to see all this uh, of the future that Netscatter give you. And of course, remember that the Netscatter, dip, it's depending about your license. So maybe you will, ha you will not have all this future on, okay? It depends about the license. So first of all, C, we will see the uh, first uh, future is availability. So uh, availability is very important because, uh, of course, um, you the the, the Netscaler will improve application availability, and of the, one of the most important and the most used is of course load balancing. Okay, load balancing future uh, will distribute your user request for your web page uh, and and other application, of course. Uh, and you you will you will low you will, you you use sorry load balancing primarily to manage user requests to heavily user application and and of course one of the most important is to prevent uh, poor uh, application uh, response okay so this is important and uh, and they will load balance on. On, on server that have the same content. Okay, this is important. So if you have the same content somewhere, you can load balance. For example, web, uh, web, web website. You can load balance DNS, LDAP, SQL, and you will use a monitor to check if the service is up. Okay, this is important. So the first thing that he will check if the service is up, and if the service is up, of course, he will balance uh, all your requests or the user requests on this server. Uh, for example, here you have, uh, you know, somebody was coming from the internet and here you have, a, uh, you have a virtual server here and for example here you have a, a load balancing here, load balancing, this is content switching, okay, we'll see that after, but imagine you have only load balancer, or here, load balancer, this is a good example, sorry, and what is happening is that uh, he will, for example, user will connect to the Netscaler and the load balancer will, will load balance the, the load on, on your server and 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 the first thing that you do is that you create a service and the service is the uh, port you're using and what type of application you are hosting on the server and after you have the monitor the monitor is is to be sure that your application is working correctly before sending the request on the server for example you can monitor uh, a web page or you can monitor uh, uh, for example for DNS uh, an entry in the DNS or for LDAP so this is really load balancing after we have the content switching and 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 this is very very nice okay this is content switching here and content switching is is for example you know people come from outside and in content switching you can say for example okay uh let's say that all people are coming from uh england i will redirect them to load balancer we will load balance for example uh, a page for the english uh, language or you can do a content switching we will load balance content, for example, iPhone or, or Android or, you know, like you want. So, content switching is, is really a way 
to to uh, present content in different language to the speaker of those language. So you you may want to present content tailored, for example, to specific device such as smartphone, or or you know the, 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 this sort of device. Uh, this is a very nice way the content switching. This is quite amazing. Uh, after in the ability we have of, of course the IPv6 support. So uh, the IPv6 support on Citrus IDC support both server side and client side IPv6 and can function of course uh, as a IPv6 uh, node. After you have the traffic domain. Traffic domain is a way to create multiple isolated environment within a Citrix ADC. This is very, very nice. And we have the GSLB. The GSLB is something that uh, load balance in you know, a one directing the client to the closest or best data center. So you can think about, you know, you have, for example, one here, Netscaler in data center A can be, for example, in, in uh, in, um, in New York and another one here in England. So depending, of course, where the user are, they will load balance uh, the request on this net scatter. So this is this is something amazing because it's GSLB and GSLB is something very, very, very terrific. After you have uh, other uh, future, like uh, in the ability, you have, for example, uh, search protection okay so what is search protection is you know when a, a client requests uh, overload a server server response becomes slow if you have a lot of people who are coming so the server becomes slow and the server is unable to respond to the new request because they have too many requests so the search protection feature will ensure that connection to the server occur at a rate that the server can handle so you be sure that you know the server will not you know go down and the, the response rate depends on how search protection, search, search protection is configured. After you have purity queuing, uh, um, and um, it's replaced uh, now in Netscaler 13 with the uh, APPQOE future. So the purity queuing future let you filter incoming HTTP traffic on the basis of category that you create and define, and you can do priority. And priority queuing direct high priority requests to the server ahead of low priority requests. So you be sure that that user who need resources for important business uh, use receive expedited access to your protected web server. So this is a very nice feature, uh, priority queuing and search protection. Okay, now we talk about acceleration. Wow, with acceleration there is so many future in Netscaler. So we have, for example, the PRR. So the PRR is an algorithm and it's re it will reduce web latency caused by packet loss. And TFO, TCP fast open, enables speed and safe data exchange between client and server during initial hand handshake. So this is a way to do really faster connection. After that, you have APP compress. So of course, APP compress is the compression is the compression feature in Netscaler, and enable Netscaler to compress HTTP response to, to compression aware browser. Uh, so virtually all current web browser are able to translate compression HTTP data, and Netscaler server is configured to compress text in HTML, XML, plain text, uh, CSS, and Microsoft Office document. After you have app cache, app cache is you know it's a cache, so the hard disk of the Netscaler is used to provide in-memory storage in Netscaler appliance uh, to content without requiring a round trip to the or origin server. So this is you know like, like cache, you know cache you are using that every day. So Netscaler can do cache also, of course. Security. Wow, so many things to speak about security. I will do a special training on security, but for the moment. Uh, we'll see uh, some of the aspects of the security. So, Citrix ADC and protection future protect web application from application layer attacks. So, an IDC appliance uh, allows legitimate client requests and can block malicious requests. It provides a built in defense against denial of service attacks and support future that protect against legitimate search, of course. And then we'll built in firewall, you know, so the firewall protect application from application layer attack, like for example, Overflow Explorer, SQL injection attack, 
Corsic uh, scripting attacks and more. So really the firewall is something amazing. For example, you can protect your your MasterCard, Visa card. So for example, if you have a website and for example you have you know you, you are storing a MasterCard, you must be you must follow uh, you know an, um, uh, ISO uh, MasterCard and Visa card. You know they they, they created a, a compliance for that so that they will hide all your MasterCard. Uh, this is something really very very nice. Uh, after that, we have the front-end anticipate optimization. This is something amazing. I use it a lot. This is really to reduce the load, okay? And, and how they will reduce the load by, of course, using a lot of techniques here. So the, 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 the goal is to reduce the number of requests uh, required for rendering each page and reducing the number of bytes in page response, of course. So for that, we're using a lot of, you know, future. We're using, for example, image optimization. So image optimization is a technique, for example, that will reduce the load, of course. And, and image optimization is something very powerful in, in, the, in Netscaler because we reduce, of course, the size of the image. So, uh, and this is, this is also, you know, very, very nice. We have, the, uh, we have also the style sheet and JavaScript. So they are able, of course, to compress also this sort of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of data and to do compression of that. So they they are doing a lot of compression for the uh, for that. We have the multipass TCP, and we have also, of course, the big cubic and Westwood TCP congestion control. So this is you know compression compression, and we'll have we have some in for some some future like for example Nile and West Nile TCP performance. Uh, it's very nice for 3G and 4G connection. Uh, all this is to make you know all the things very very powerful. So uh, so yes, Nile algorithm are really very powerful. Okay, so uh, I will stop now the this first video and we will see in this in the next one the platform. Okay, the platform, the the, the different way that you can uh, install the, the Netscaler. Thank you for all. See you in the next lecture. Bye bye.